Okay, happy Thanksgiving, and I'm wearing my pilgrim hat. Um, this is a Galini tradition. My wife has a whole bunch of these. We wear them every year. I've been wearing the turkey one all day, but I'm going to be a pilgrim for this uh, particular question. Um, so bear with me. All right, enjoy. Look at this. Okay. Seven-year-old diagnosed with anxiety, ADHD, pediatrician, and is diagnosing uh, psychiatrist sent papers implement, about implementing a 504 plan for him. Uh, school's saying that they have to have a meeting. Now, you asked this a while ago, um, so I don't know what the current status is. I appreciate your patience, though. Now, you asked, can they deny him a 504 at all? Yeah, of course, a school can you know, deny kids all the time, but it doesn't mean you're without options. All right. You can always file a complaint, um, with the office of civil rights because they deal with, uh, um, uh, 504 compliance. Uh, so you would just need to Google, you know, where, wherever you live, um, who, uh, where the location for the office of civil rights that handles, and you'd need to file a complaint, um, you know, saying that they denied your child, and your child has anxiety and ADHD. Both of those, um, it, it, it's a very compelling argument that your, you know, your child suffers um, or your child has um, recognized disabilities that impact major life functions. Because that that would be what the definition would be uh, in order to qualify for a 504 plan. Would be. Um, you know, a disability that impacts major life functions. And that could be, you know, the mental, breathing, um, emotional, things of that nature. And you're saying that, yes, it does. Now, what they're saying is, well, you know, but his grades, or they don't interfere with his grades. What the hell does that to do with anything? Grades are subjective, by the way. And that's not necessarily the, the st well, that's not the standard that we use to apply as to whether a child requires accommodations, okay? Because that's what a 504 would do, is it would provide accommodations. And um, I have many, 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 many schools, um, well, let's look at it this way, that, that have 504 plans that include behavior plans for kids. Now, that's not a grade, necessarily, I mean, especially if your child gets older, I mean, behavior is not a grade or conduct. It is, you know, the younger ages. If this, well, there you go. Uh, but there are multiple areas outside of academics that we service our kids under inside schools, functional skills. Um, we also have the educational performance areas of social emotional development that include behavior. We also have the area of communication. Any of those areas, not just grades attached to academics, that, that's just one component. They're missing the other ones. And your child very well could require accommodations in these areas. And so you need to bring that up. Um, you know, because whatever the disability is, if it impacts the major life functions um, that then result in, in deficits or manifests itself uh, inside the school environment to where, you know, um, I mean, we have a lot of kids, we, we, have, we have a spike in things like suicide uh, for this age group. Uh, we haven't seen it before like this. Schools are not servicing our kids globally, holistically as the entire child and they're only focused on the stupid stuff over here and they're missing all of these other areas that are very very important for our children's uh, um, health mental health emotional health um, all of those things that go into development to make a a functional tax-paying human being uh, that can hold down a job which is the entire point of education um, so you got uh, you got an argument there um, can they deny him if his behaviors do not see like I said I don't want to be redundant but grades are subjective and what I've ended up finding out is I've had schools um, manipulating grades or not or not grading 
on an accurate level in order to avoid having the parent figure out that more is going on. The other thing is, I don't know if you're medicating, uh, but if you're medicating, a school's required to look at your child in their natural state. Well, their natural state is not medicated, and but it's, it's sometimes it's very difficult if you've been medicating your child long for a long time. The school's never seen your child in their natural state. And so in situations like that, you know your child in their natural state more than anybody else does. But that doesn't mean anybody else over here has seen your child in their natural state. And, you know, at that point, that tends to be a source of, of where some of these disagreements come from. Um, and if that's the case, that's why, you know, more should be more weight should be given to the recommendations of the psychiatrist and, of, and the treating physician. And there's too many schools that sit there and they, they, they disregard or they poo poo on what the, the medical professionals say, which is baffling to me, baffling. Um, because I see schools embracing and loving what doctors say if it's something they want to hear. But then if it's something that, that you know, it, it's because schools are too conspiratorial. I mean, thinking that, that you know, every parent's out there gaming the system to keep their kids home or, or you know, or trying to give them some edge as though, you know, we love you know, labels and, and, you know, <laughs> it just, it's, it's ridiculous, but that's what we're dealing with. Um, but I, I think I answered your question. Um, and like I said, I know you answered this a while ago, so I'm quite sure that you were either, either denied or, or granted a 504. So if you want to provide an update, um, you, you do so.